Shmup in the Bible, Luke. Hello and welcome to another edition of Shmup in the Bible. I'm Cecil B. DeShmup and I proudly display my religious studies degree next to all the priceless artwork I've been able to buy uh, because of it. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to tackle the gospel according to Luke. Well, who was Luke? Well, he was a Jedi like his father before him. Right, wrong Luke. Come on, people. Well, from historical context and writings, we know that biblical Luke wasn't a witness to Jesus' life and actions, but he did have eyewitness accounts and secondary reports to help him out. But don't feel too bad for Luke. Sure, he was late to the party, but he threw a great Cinco de Mayo bash every year, which uh, more than made up for missing all the cool Jesus stuff. Another thing to keep in mind about Luke's gospel is that it places a huge emphasis on social justice, aka helping the poor, the sick, and basically anyone who could use some help, which is why Luke donated all the leftover guacamole uh, after every party. Oh, and the gospel also states that people with lots of money and possessions should just give them away. I'm guessing aside from his sombreros and piñatas, Luke led a pretty simple life. So Luke begins his gospel with an in-depth look at the conception and birth of Jesus and his cousin John, who later grows up to be John the Baptist. It'd be kind of cool to have a middle name of the. Luke specifically mentions how Mary, Jesus' mother, became pregnant without ever having sex. Basically, the angel Gabriel is like, uh, Hey Mary, how's it going? Good weather we've been having. Hope all's well. Oh, by the way, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you're gonna wind up pregnant. Hope you didn't have plans for the next nine months. Enjoy the nice weather. Love, Gabriel. Uh, pretty intense, yeah, but Gaby included some coupons from coupons.com for Pampers. So all in all, well, not a bad deal. Nine months later, Jesus is born in a manger in Bethlehem. Allegedly, his first words were, can somebody please shut that little drummer boy up? That was just allegedly, come on people. But you try playing the drums around an infant and see how well it uh, goes over. And since there's only so long we can watch a video about a baby, I'm gonna flash forward to Jesus' adult years. If you feel cheated by this, well, go watch a baby for a while. You'll understand my decision after about 10 minutes. Yeah. So Jesus is baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. John's like, why does everybody keep asking me to do this? After this, Jesus celebrates his baptism just like everyone does. He goes into the desert and wrestles with the devil for 40 days. <laughs> okay, maybe not everyone. I went to Applebee's, but uh, well, one could say I wrestled with the devil later that night uh, in the bathroom. After winning his metaphorical wrestling match and not succumbing to temptation and the devil, Jesus begins touring the countryside, teaching, gathering followers along the way, you know, kind of like Forrest Gump there, and selling out Staples Center two nights in a row. He also spends time casting out demons and healing people with various physical ailments, though I'm pretty sure he saved that one uh, for his encore. Word starts to spread, and to be fair, that's bound to happen when you're giving the gift of sight to blind people, healing lepers, and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can't exactly say, hey, keep this whole miracle thing on the DL, okay? Yeah. Well, the highbrow Jewish scribes and priests are less than impressed with Jesus' work, but he keeps doing his thing, part of which includes spending time with both the poor and the sinners. The scribes are like, uh, why are you spending time with these people? They're kind of gross. And Jesus is like, it is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. And the scribes are like, huh? And Jesus is all, I'm trying to get them to repent, and I like analogies. Come on, guys. So Jesus and his 12 apostles keep on spreading the word of God, healing people and exercising demons. Sounds like a real life video game. At some point, they ascend a mountain to pray and Moses and Elijah come down from heaven to chill with Jesus, eat some guac and see how he's doing. Jesus is like, doing great. Been talking about earthly goods and heavenly rewards and how you can't really get into heaven if you're hoarding treasure down there. I'm also trying the whole vegan thing out. Some wealthy politician catches wind of what Jesus has been saying and is like, going vegan is tough. Also, how hard is it to get into heaven if you're hoarding earthly treasure? And Jesus is like, think of it this way. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Well, presumably, the wealthy politician immediately set forth to find a willing camel to participate in that uh, needle thing. We promise no camels were harmed in the making of this video. Unfortunately, 
all this teaching and miracle working is making the Jewish higher-ups pretty unhappy. Luckily for the high priest, this guy named Judas is willing to help him. You may remember him as one of Jesus' 12 most faithful friends. Well, hopefully Jesus asked for his best friend forever necklace back. Yeah, I'd, I'd do that. Jesus is arrested and handed over to the Roman prefect who has the authority in the situation. His name's Pontius Pilate. Well, Pilate doesn't think Jesus is guilty of anything, and he's like, uh, Guys, no, this is actually crazy. But the crowd demands his death, and sometimes, oh, they can be so pushy. Pilate is like, well, oh, do what you gotta do. And Jesus is forced to carry his own cross to the site of his crucifixion. Really hope he asks for that BFF necklace back. Well, after his death, Jesus is placed in a tomb, and a stone is placed in front. Three days later, Mary Magdalene, Jesus' mother Mary, and another woman named Joanna head to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body for burial, only to find that the stone has been rolled away. Instead, they find some angels wearing robes that flash lightning bolts, which is actually what I wanted to wear today, but uh, well, my wife said the dry cleaner lost it. <laughs> what a shame. They tell the woman that Jesus has risen, just as he foretold, and, well, this is also known as the biggest I told you so in history. The women spread the word, and pretty soon Jesus appears to some men on the road to Emmaus. He also shows up and hangs with the apostles for a bit to eat some guac and watch the game. After that, Jesus rises into heaven and the book of Luke comes to an end. Because seriously, like, how do you top that? Well, join me next time for our last gospel. Until then, I'm Cecil B. DeSchmupp, and I'm going on Amazon to uh, replace my lightning rope. Mm -hmm.